Plans to fully restore the Hallmark Center come with a hefty price tag. Plus, a missed deadline on the Walmart project. What that means for Rock Island next. WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News this morning. Good Tuesday morning and thanks for watching Local 4 News this morning. I'm Emily Scarlett. New this morning, one person is taken to the hospital overnight after suffering injuries in a house fire. Davenport firefighters got the call shortly after midnight to a home near Pine and 58th Streets. We do not know how severely the person was injured or what caused the fire, but we'll continue to follow the story and bring you the latest information as we learn more. Rock Island City Council takes its next step with the Hallberg Center three months after deciding not to sell the building. Last night, council members discussed how they plan to pay for restoring it. Local 4's Greta Patrick shows us how the city will not be paying for it alone. Rock Island City Council has approved a deal to have the Parks and Rec Department work with the Friends of Hauberg organization. Over a period of more than 20 years, they hope to fully restore the Hauberg mansion. They want to help. They just do. They want to. They want to see this succeed, and it will. And it will. Um, I think that you know, if if the city and Friends of Hauberg and Parks and Rec all work together, this year the house needs minor improvements. Rock Island's Parks and Rec director John Grip says sixteen thousand dollars has been budgeted to weatherproof the building seven or nine windows that need to have significant work done so the weather doesn't get in and these are stained glass windows. But that's not all the house needs in 2016. Friends of Hauberg's president Deb Kunze says many people have offered their services to the restoration. Uh, the community has really come forward and said hey we want to help. I get calls every day. A local tree service offered to remove invasive trees from the property. Painters have offered to repaint the house and carriage house and Kunze says they're looking at getting Boy Scouts to volunteer to do some grounds work. It's been maintained. We just need to do some improvements to it to make it more attractive and a benefit to our community. This year the house will need $25,000 in repairs. 10,000 of that is expected to come from the Friends of Hauberg. Now that the city is working with Friends of Hauberg, they hope to get work started this summer. Greta Patrick, Local 4 News. Thanks, Greta. Walmart missed a deadline in the process of building a store in Rock Island, but the city is giving the company a three-month extension. The company is working on its due diligence to submit its feasibility plan. A Walmart spokesperson says extensions on large projects like this are not unusual. Rock Island began trying to bring Walmart to the area four years ago. The city has already spent about $15 million on the project. I know that it's taken a long time. All these projects do take a long time. You run into curbs, you run into things that you don't know that are going to happen. But this is an excellent project. It's going to be completed, and we're really going to we're going to have a good a good facility when it's all done. Rock Island's mayor says the store will bring hundreds of jobs and more than a million dollars in sales tax revenue each year. Davenport School District administrators have some ideas about what to do with leftover space at J.B. Young Intermediate once it closes at the end of this academic year. They're looking to rent the first floor. Other parts of the building will be filled with administrative offices. They intend to consider suggestions from the public as rental applications are received. The district spokesperson says the hope is to land groups that will benefit Davenport students. We would want organizations uh, and entities who are interested in providing services and opportunities that would enrich and help the neighborhood. Applications will be accepted until June 15th. They plan to move tenants in during the summer of 2017. After nearly a year without a budget, the deficit in Illinois has grown to $5 billion. Now the state's independent commission, which analyzes state spending, is suggesting the only way to fix the problem is by raising taxes. But as Local 4's Matt Porter explains, that's a hard sell for lawmakers. Our effort to come up with new revenue, it may be that there's a tax increase that impacts every Illinois citizen. Democrats sought to raise almost $2 billion by taxing the wealthy while the rest of the state would have had a tax cut. You know, the fair tax would have worked. You know, 33 states out of 50 have it. But now the state will have to raise its other taxes to make up at least a $5 billion deficit. Social service advocates say the budget can't be balanced on the backs of cuts to the poor and sick. What's going to happen when, when they do come up with one? 
You know, he keeps wanting to cut this and cut that, and cuts aren't the answer. One proposal would be adding new taxes on services, but some say that puts the burden on Illinois' fragile small businesses. We think the service tax is regressive. Business advocate Kim Meis thinks raising the income tax could be more effective and less painful. So at least from that perspective, it's based on one's ability to pay versus based on, you know, someone needs their car fixed, so we're going to put additional tax on top of them. But adds no taxes should be raised without workers' compensation and other reforms. So there are lots of things that Governor Rauner has been pushing for and the NFIB has been pushing for um, that have to be part of any kind of budget deal, and that includes new revenue. And again, that was Matt Porter reporting. Thanks for that. Nebraska and West Virginia are on top with primaries today for the Republicans. It's only West Virginia for the Democrats where Bernie Sanders is in the lead. He told voters in New Jersey he's not giving up on the race. We're going to go into Philadelphia in the Democratic Convention. And expect to come out with the Democratic nomination. There are nearly a dozen primaries and caucuses left in the campaign. Hillary Clinton leads Sanders by hundreds of delegates. She's been focused on a possible matchup with Donald Trump in the general election. And Iowa Governor Terry Branstad says he'll support Donald Trump when he becomes the Republican nominee for president. Branstad says he was surprised at how well the businessman performed in the race. He initially thought Trump would not last when he saw him at the Iowa State Fair. The governor also says he supports Iowa Senator Joni Ernst as a possible vice presidential pick for Trump. Let's check in with meteorologist Anthony Peoples on this Tuesday morning. Some activity outside last night. You've even mentioned there were some funnels that happened in our area. Yeah. Yeah, we had several funnel clouds, Emily, that briefly touched the ground. No damage, and they dissipated very quickly off to the southwest of us. So uh, we did have a little bit of activity. We just saw rain in the Quad Cities. So more showers for us today then, Anthony? Yeah, we're seeing some rain out there this morning, and also we're seeing uh, some fog of reducing visibilities to just a few miles in many locations. Right now we have 60 degrees in the Quad Cities in Moline. East winds at 9. 58 in Davenport. Here are those visibilities and you can see uh, generally uh, three to seven miles across the area. 10 is perfect visibility. But as we take a look at radar this morning, we have some moderate to heavy showers now moving around Alexis over toward Keysburg and Mediopolis just to the south of the Quad Cities. This will be moving into our area and here's what's left of that heavy rain that moved through our eastern hometowns earlier this morning. Now just moderate showers up around Freeport. Here's the last six hours satellite radar showing you everything is moving off to the north. And if so, if everything's moving northward and the Quad Cities is right here, what's south of us? Well, this is the rain that's going to be moving through here this morning. So kids heading off to school will have to deal with some fog and rain. And as you head off to work, same for you. Then this afternoon, 74 degrees. We will see some scattered showers and thunderstorms. This isn't going to be a widespread thing, but scattered showers and storms this afternoon. A couple of them could be strong, but I'm holding off for the strong to severe weather tomorrow evening across the area. That'll come after a very warm day tomorrow with some sunshine. We could make it into the low 80s tomorrow, but tomorrow evening we could have a bout of severe weather, especially in our uh, southern hometowns. All right, I know you'll keep us up to date mm -hmm. on that, Anthony. Thank you. Yes. Well, their goal is to strengthen the community's response to child abuse through prevention, intervention, and advocacy. How you can help them continue offering their services free of charge after the break. Stay with us. The time now is 610. You're watching Local 4 News this morning. WHBF is local for you with Emily Scarlett and meteorologist Anthony Peoples. This is Local 4 News this morning in high definition.